Okay. Shall we proceed, Sean? Yeah, you're all set. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to the uh, what is it? May meeting of the uh, Committee of Adjustment for the Town of Tecumseh. Um, everyone is here with the exception of Paul uh, Jovan, who has sent his regrets. So we'll be one short tonight. Um, so I'll call the meeting to order. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Any of the members? No, seeing none. Lots of shaking of the head. Uh, minutes for March 22nd were pre circulated. Any comment on the minutes? Motion. Tom and Tony. Any addition, deletion, correction? All in favor? Opposed, carried. Minutes of March 29th, which was a special meeting last month, if you remember. Uh, motion on that. Uh, Daniel and Tom. Yeah, any addition, deletion, correction? All in favor? Carrie? You guys might have a hard time hearing me with my microphone sitting over there. Uh, minutes of the meeting of April 26th. Again, we're pre circulated motion. Lori, seconder, Tom, Tony. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. First application this meeting is for uh, 5648 North Talbot. We have a couple of people that are uh, on the sidelines here. Probably should turn the mic on now. Timothy and Sandra. Hello. Hi. And uh, Donna, if you want to go ahead and read it. Application for consent VO 721, John White, 5648 North Talbot Road. The purpose of the application is to request consent to sever a vacant residential lot having a frontage of 30.48 meters, 100 feet, an irregular depth and an approximate lot area of 2,907 square meters, 0.72 acres outlined in red. The proposed retained lot containing an existing dwelling, detached garage and a shed has a frontage of 61.1 meters, 200.5 feet, an irregular depth and an approximate lot area of 4,883.9 square meters, 1.2 acres, outlined in green. The lands are designated residential in the recently adopted Town of Tecumseh official plan and zoned agricultural in the Sandwich South Zoning Bylaw. As a condition of approval, a zoning bylaw amendment rezoning the lands into a site-specific Hamlet residential zone will be required. Correspondence received the engineer's comments are as follows. That the owner enter into and provide the town of Tecumseh a written agreement for the reapportionment of the drainage assessment for the subject lands in accordance with section 65.2 of the Ontario Drainage Act RSO 1990 as amended and that the associated costs of same be borne solely by the applicant. A drainage report is currently being prepared under Section 78 of the Drainage Act for the repair and improvement to the Shuttleworth drain. Depending on timing, it may be possible to have the reapportionment of the drainage assessment addressed through this report. The owner be advised that prior to the severance being finalized, a new access culvert and driveway are required across the open municipal drain, Shuttleworth drain, to the parcel to be severed in accordance with Section 78 of the Ontario Drainage Act, RSO 1990, as amended, and that the owner is required to submit a request for improvements form to the town for the required new access culvert, and that all costs related to the new access culvert and driveway are the responsibility of the applicant. As noted above, a drainage report is currently being 
prepared under Section 78 of the Drainage Act for the repair and improvement to the Shuttleworth drain. Based on the draft information available at this time, it appears that an existing culvert located at the portion of the property to be severed is proposed to be replaced as part of the repair and improvement to the drain. The new culvert is to be installed prior to the severance being finalized, or it must be confirmed that the existing culvert satisfies all current town requirements for access culverts that the parcel to be retained and the parcel to be severed are to be serviced with separate water supplies, storm and sanitary sewer systems to the satisfaction of the Town of Tecumseh Public Works, Water Department and Building Department prior to the severance being finalized. No comments received from the Building Department, no comments from Fire Services, no comments from Essex Power Lines, and the following is from Essex Region Conservation Authority. The above noted lands are subject to our development interface and wetlands and alterations to shorelines and watercourses regulation under the Conservation Authorities Act, Ontario Regulation Number 158-06. The parcel falls within the regulated area of the Shuttleworth drain. The property owner will be required to obtain a permit and or clearance from the Essex Region Conservation Authority prior to any future construction or site alteration or other activities affected by Section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Our information indicates that the subject property may support habitat of endangered species and threatened species as per Section 2.1.7 of the PPS 2020, development and site alteration shall not be permitted in habitat of endangered species and threatened species except in accordance with provincial and federal requirements. All species listed as endangered or threatened, aquatic species, plants, mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, etc., as well as their related habitats are protected under the Ontario Endangered Species Act. Prior to initiate initiating any proposed work on the property, it is the proponent's responsibility to contact the Species at Risk branch of the Ontario Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks to ensure all issues related to the Endangered Species Act are addressed. All inquiries regarding Endangered Species Act should be made with permission and compliance section of the MECP. These comments are provided from our perspective as an advisory service provider to the planning authority on matters related to natural heritage and natural heritage systems as outlined in section 2.1 of the provincial policy statement of the planning act. The comments in this section do not necessarily represent the provincial position and are advisory in nature for the consideration of the planning authority. With a review of background information and aerial photograph, ERCA has no objection to the application for consent. Okay, thank you very much, Donna. Thank you. Um, Sandra, you're, you're in the foreground on the camera. Are you gonna to speak to this? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, me and my husband, and uh, we've gone through and we, we've read through that. Thank you so much uh, for coordinating and Donna for all your help so far. Um, it's uh, We have a few questions uh, specifically about, it was points number six and seven, which were about the culvert. Uh, so we're just curious, um, there is the existing culvert that it says may meet the requirements for the town. So who would be able to tell us if that culvert um, would be satisfactory um, so that we could begin construction. Chad? Hey, Mr. Chair, um, you could contact uh, the, the Public Works Department and they would direct you to the appropriate person to, to um, help you uh, determine that. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So, Chad, there is a drainage report underway, is there? Yes, no. So those those issues dealing with the drain uh, could be satisfied under the drainage report, in including the reapportionment, right? That's correct. Yeah. So there is, there is a process underway that will answer some of those questions. Okay, great. What I, we do have a question about is um, 
would we be able to, I know it says like we would need the new culvert and driveway before um, the severance can be finalized, but would it be possible uh, to use the existing culvert um, and, you know, put stone in for a driveway and uh, get a new culvert once construction is done, just with the heavy machinery, we're worried that if something new is installed right now, it may get wrecked uh, in the process and then we're going to have to replace it anyway. Um, I really don't have a good answer for that. Chad, can you help? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I think that um, there, there might be something um, that can be worked out with the drainage superintendent and through the public works department. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, as a condition of the severance, you know, right now it stands that that culvert has to be replaced. Uh, so I would, there, there are various routes to, to satisfying that condition. It, it would begin with a, a discussion to be had with the the, the um, town's engineer and or drainage superintendent. Okay, great, thank you. We we will uh, start there. There okay. is. Okay. Is is there anything else you'd like? To we did have uh, just one more question, and I guess maybe you, if this isn't the the appropriate uh, time to be asking about the different points, that uh, you can let me know, but. Just on point nine, um, there was just a um, like one of the requirements in there was a, a five percent of the um, like parkland to be paid to the town of Tecumseh. So five percent based on estimated market value of that land. And we were just curious how that's determined. We did speak with a, an appraiser uh, before we made the offer to purchase the land, and um, we, we've got a, a firm sale and offer right now, like a purchase and sale agreement. It's just we, we weren't sure at what point this would be worked out and with who? Chad? <laughs> Chair, yeah, that is, is the uh, the typical way to do that is to get an appraisal and base it on 5% of the value of that land the day before the decision is granted. Okay, great. And would that be like, do you, does the town have an, uh, like a, a list of approved uh, appraisers or can it be somebody that um, we know that we've already uh, worked with in order to assess the land before we uh, made the offer? Mr. Chair, through you, the town doesn't have a, a list of, of uh, approved appraisers. Okay. Um, it, it would just have to be someone that is, is licensed as an, as an appraiser. Okay, perfect. Province of Ontario. Okay, and uh, so just um, one last thing. Uh, would we be able to start working on various items on that list, like satisfying all the various conditions at once? Or is there a recommended order? Um, I just want to make sure we don't get stopped along the way if there is an issue, let's say, with rezoning. But we've already gone ahead and um, you know, spent money on the surveying and on getting the water connected to the lot and things like that. Well, the only I think the only order is what what's convenient for you and satisfies you that you're not going to spend money um, unnecessarily. The only the only uh, criteria we have is it has to be done one year from the date of our decision. So you have a year to do it. Okay. The order is up to you. Thank you. Okay. Committee have any questions? No burning questions. Okay. <laughs> it is a pretty straightforward proposition. Uh, motion then. Laurie, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Th Chair, through you. Uh, to, uh, I guess, the team here. It's a, it's a great application. It creates a, a very nice, sizable lot, serviceable, uh, in line with our uh, future plans for Old Castle slash uh, Maidstone. It, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for the property owners, for the neighbors uh, to intensify and use existing land. I like the conditions as set out in the planning report. So I do move to approve the application with those proposed uh, or recommended conditions rather. Daniel, seconder. Okay. Any comment on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. So there you go. Wasn't Thank that easy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was yes. easy. A lot of anticipation <laughs> for. Uh... <laughs> they're, they're not always easy, let me tell you. Okay. <laughs> Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, the second application this evening is uh, 
Andrea Howard on Shawnee Road. And there she is. Well, that's Lori. Okay. And there's Andrew. Okay. Uh, Donna. Application for consent BOA 21, Andrea Howard, 1441 Shawnee Road. The purpose of the application is to request consent for the following to sever a residential lot having a frontage of 15.24 meters, 50 feet, a depth of 40.2 meters, 132 feet, and a lot area of 613.1 square meters, 6,600 square feet, outlined in red. The proposed retained lot containing an existing dwelling will have a frontage of 15.24 meters, 50 feet, and a regular depth and a lot area of 613.1 square meters, 6,600 square feet outlined in green. And to create an easement across the retained lot in favor of the severed parcel, having a width of three meters, 10 feet, and a depth of 40.2, 40 decimal two meters, 132 feet, outlined in pink for the purpose of providing municipal services to the severed parcel from Shawnee Road. The lands are designated residential in the Town of Tecumseh official plan and zoned residential R2 in the Tecumseh zoning bylaw. As a condition of approval, zoning bylaw amendment will be required to rezone the severed parcel into a site-specific residential zone R3 to permit a semi-detached dwelling and to establish minimum lot and yard requirements and rezone the retained parcel into a site-specific residential R2 zone to establish minimum lot and yard requirements. We received the following correspondence, engineering, that the parcel to be retained and the parcel to be severed are to be serviced with separate water supplies, storm and sanitary sewer systems to the satisfaction of the Town of Tecumseh Public Works, Water Division and Building Department prior to the severance being finalized. Based on the pre-consultation for this application, it is our understanding that the proposed easement on the retained property is for a proposed storm sewer connection from Shawnee Road to the severed parcel. Sanitary and water services to the severed property would be from Briette Court. In order to satisfy this condition, it must be confirmed that the proposed three meter wide easement provides sufficient room to construct and undertake future maintenance work on the proposed storm sewer service connection. To date, confirmation for this is issue has not been provided to the town. Building department, no comments, no comments from fire, no concerns from Essex Power and IRCAS provides the following. With a review and background information and aerial photograph, IRCA has no objection to the application for consent. Well, usually, okay, thank you, Donna. Um, we're just looking at the conditions here. So uh, who's going to speak to this? Uh, one of the agents maybe? Or Andrea, are you going to? No, actually, my understanding was uh, the buyer was available to speak. Um, I have no problem with it, uh, but I think they were prepared based on my conversations with the uh, real estate agent. Okay, well, that's fine. Just uh, if there's anything that any of you need to let us know that we don't know already, it'll be, this is the time to do it. So, Jeffu? Well, our intention there is creating a new lot. We are going to build a summit there. Uh, on the whole street, you've got the summit, townhouse. So basically what we are going to build is going to fit into the character of the entire neighborhood. Uh, we talked with Kirby and John in engineering. They don't see this issue there, hooking up the service at the back. The only a little tricky thing is just, a, you know, storm sewer going through uh, the easement, under the easement, and going to Shawnee Road, but which is uh, still doable. Okay, so that, that would be the question for Andrea. She's okay with that and willing to provide that easement? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, is there any other comments from you? Or will I go to the committee? Committee? So I'd like to say something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Laura, go ahead. I am at 11914 Brulee Court. 
and I am just at the end of the curve. And of course, there is when there is a lot of traffic, I am pleased that at least I have two giant stones and a tree to protect me from cars coming down or going down the curve. Another thing is, I am sure you're aware of the proposed expansion of Dulac Nursing Home. Mm -hmm. And so that would be more traffic. And the, um, I am wondering, I think they did mention that the proposed building would be similar to what we have at present. Uh, yeah, he did say it was, it would be in keeping with the neighborhood. So the assumption yeah. would be, although we don't have any okay. building plans and, and really we have no way to regulate that. Okay. Other than, go ahead. And um, this is the driveway, I guess, would be between the mailbox and the light post where there is um, a bus stop. That's where the the driveway would be next to the mailbox. So which which uh, north or north or south side of the lot? Pardon me. On the north or south side of the proposed lot, do you know? Where I am. No, where the where you think the driveway is going to go? Well, I guess it has to be between the mailbox. And the light code. Well, um, Chad, can you help me? Because it doesn't, I don't okay. see the. The mailbox is about here. Sure. There's a community mailbox on the sidewalk. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I see that. Where's, where is the light post? On the edge of your driveway? Not my driveway, but my neighbor's driveway. Your neighbor's driveway, okay. Yes. And when she comes out, yeah. she has to be very careful. Yes. Well, being it would have to be in there somewhere because it's got to come off the frontage of that lot. Yes. Yeah. Is, will will we see a plan of the um, the proposed building? Um, we see a plan of the proposed building. Not tonight. We actually, we have, we have a plan of the lot. I don't think we have anything on the building itself, do we, Chad? No, Mr. Mr. Chair, um, the the applicant, uh, the, the future owner would have to go through a rezoning process. Yeah. Uh, as noted in, in, in my report and uh, in the conditions, it would be a condition of severance if the committee decided to grant the severance. Uh, and it, in, you know, getting closer to that stage, the, the, the proponent might have um, some some concepts of what uh, he's uh, proposing to build. Uh, however, uh, it's not entirely necessary, as you know, uh, as the committee is aware, we, we can't dictate the, the appearance of the exterior of the of the right. dwelling. But it is helpful sometimes to know what what the plans are for um, for a lot in the context of a rezoning application. So, but, uh, so in the rezoning application process, Ms. Mills would have a chance to see some kind of detail like that? She, she, she might if it's something that the, the proponents um, submit along with the rezoning application. I'm not the only one that, uh, but I was the only one available tonight. So we were really interested in what the, uh, the plan would be, especially looking at the size of the lot especially the frontage, I think it's much less than what we present have for semi that. Well, the I short answer, I guess, the short button. answer is that, the short answer is that we don't have it at this time, at this meeting. It wouldn't be required for this process. It would be required at a rezoning process that will have to be fulfilled before this uh, severance is approved. So that, that whole thing will go on 
And during that time, you'll see, likely see what the uh, proponents are going to lay out there. Um, I'm sure under rezoning, they'll want to know what kind of facility is going to go there. So I, we can't help you tonight with that. Okay. Any, anything else? No, just that. Um, I'd like to be informed. Well, you're a neighbor, so you would be. Yes, yes, yes. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a bowling alley. <laughs> okay. Um, committee have any questions? Tom. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I, I see on the attached documentation, it's a proposed semi-detached one-story resident. So is, is that what's being proposed? The, there is a site plan there. There's a site plan. Yeah, it's a fair Furlano custom homes. Shows exactly what's going there. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I miss most, that. Jeff, Jeff? most likely we're going to build a, a raised ranch or ranch. So it's oh. it's one residence or two residences? Well, it's classified as a semi. So you've got left and right unit, two units. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So to answer Miss Mill's question, or through you, Mr. Chair, the, yep. the driveways are right in the middle of the lot. I don't know if that helps, Chad, if you want to. And it would be similar to what's already present buildings. Hmm. Would it be similar to present buildings? Present homes? It's, I heard uh, you say Tom raised ranch. Yeah, most, most slightly, you know, it would be raised ranch or ranch. We haven't decided yet. So we got to check with the architect. No. Now, uh, can I say something, please? Oh, my. Hello? Yeah. I'm looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Robert. Oh, you can't see me. Oh, there you there. are. Yeah, we're building a exactly what's there. there. It could be a raised ranch. And if you look in the area, there's many raised ranches with a one car garage. We're not sure if the driveways are going to be in the middle and the end, but it's going to be consistent to what's there already. We're not changing any any of the design. It's going to be similar. Uh, the traffic that goes that the, the the person was complaining about is not traffic that lives there. It's uh, thorough traffic that's coming through Banwell and uh, going down Shiny Road to cut through to get to the expressway. That's not local traffic. But anything that we're going to build there is going to be one floor, single floor, whether it's a raised ranch or a ranch. We're not sure yet. We haven't really decided. Uh, but uh, it's going to be uh, exactly to, to exactly what's what's there in that subdivision right now. Good. So no bowling alley. That's good. Bowling alley. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I have yep. just a question of clarification maybe to Chad. Why is the so storm sewer being serviced through Shawnee? Shawnee? There's just no storm available on Bruyette? For you, Mr. Chair, uh, yeah, the storm uh, is does not front the, the property along Bruyette. Um, it's a considerable distance away, and there will also be conflicts with municipal infrastructure um, to connect it from, from Bruyette. Um, so that's why the proponents have proposed going through an easement um, to Shawnee. But again, as the uh, engineer, municipal engineer has, has pointed out, that has to be confirmed that it can accommodate the, um, the, sanit the storm sewer connection to Shawnee prior to it being approved. And is that fairly unique in the town where you have a servicing agreement across a neighboring property? Mr. Chair, it is, it is unique. Um, 
However, as the, uh, the proponent indicated, um, there have been discussions with, with the Public Works Department and with the town's engineer, and they are open to this arrangement uh, under this condition because of the, of the uh, difficulty with accessing the storm sewer from the Briette side of the lot. If you look at the, hello, if you look at the houses, the semis to the north of this property, they have the similar, they have a storm, storm drain that's at the backyards and it goes across about five or six semi detaches and it hooks up to the road down the street. So it's, it's similar because it's, uh, it's, it's the same reason they couldn't hook up to the storm drain that was already existing there. Mm -hmm. and, and that easement would be registered on title with both properties then? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Lori? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to, uh, I guess let's start with uh, administration, either to Ms. Ferris or Mr. Jeffrey. The properties, and I don't have a, a quick screenshot to be able to give you addresses, but the existing semi-detached that I believe front yet, there's yet, yeah, so there's those four that run east, west, yep. Have we received any correspondence or is there anyone on the call from maybe not this, the four, but the two structures for dwelling units to the, let's say, to the left of the screen specifically? Uh, I'll, I'll defer to Donna, Mr. Chair, but my understanding is, is we, we haven't and that there is no one on the call from, from those units. Okay. Uh, Donna, nothing from you, Donna. Donna, do you have any information for us on that? Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Um, <laughs> there was one resident at 11898 Briette Court that requested to be present tonight, but he had no comments. Um, and then uh, Miss Mills uh, was the other resident um, that expressed concerns for tonight. And she is at 11914 Briette Court. So 11, 8, 9, 8, you said, but not 914. But not 11, 9, 20, 11, 9, 9, 30, no. 11, 9, 40. Okay. All right. So um, th that was really my biggest concern was having someone's rear yard abut someone's side yard or vice versa. Uh, so the residents will have an opportunity as well down the road with the rezoning application. And, you know, if it gets to that point, um, other matters that need to be addressed um, if they need to speak up or if they would like to speak up. But that was one question for administration. Um, the other question was related to the easement that's been answered. Thank you to Tom for bringing that up. I wondered what the purpose was. Um, the question about the rezoning, I guess one step forward from here. So one of the conditions that administration is recommending is a rezoning. Um, to be able to address allowing that land use and any variances in, let's say, um, lot width or, or whatever the case may be. Is it likely that this uh, group, or the committee would not be required to see the application down the road anyway? So it's just coming to us for, um, a severance and that the rezoning would cover any potential variances to, again, to Mr. Jeffrey on that. Through you, Mr. Chair. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, because the rezoning is required to uh, permit a semi detached dwelling um, rather than make them make the applicant or want to go through both a minor variance and a rezoning um, application. The future for these types of situations, we make it a condition that the rezoning address uh, both the, the principle of use uh, to allow for the semi detached and address the um, undersized lot lot area of the retained lot and both the frontage and lot area of the severed lot. 
Okay, so further to that, thank you, Chad. Further to that, the um, the lot likely to, well, I mean, part lot control could be one option, but the lot, if severed, would only be one lot and not two. For example, if uh, the applicant and future property owner would like to sever and make that semi-detached two lots, that application would need to come back to us, correct? And again, three, Mr. Chair, that's, that's right. Um, the severed lot is, is one lot upon which the, the, a rezoning application will be necessary to permit a semi-detached. That semi-detached could, uh, in the future, either be uh, severed again down the middle of the, the, you know, the dividing wall, or as you mentioned, through a part lot control exemption process to, to create a freehold ownership of both uh, units in this case. Okay. Okay, uh, lastly, I know I feel like I'm just kind of going through those um, scenarios. During the building permit review stage, during let's say the, even the rezoning stage, yes, I believe there are going to be questions following up on Ms. Mills' um, suggestion. There are going to be questions on beyond the land use as a semi-detached, will the applicant be able to meet the parking requirements, for example. So I think to the applicants, if you could be prepared with those types of questions, because parking is, is an issue for semi-detached, I don't know what the requirement it is offhand, Chad, but uh, something to be mindful of is that would the severance, although we're just looking at the severance, but would the severance put the municipality in a compromising position where it couldn't even fit ample parking. I think that's my kind of question. Again, three, Mr. Chair, um, the, the standard for parking is two spaces per, per dwelling unit for a semi-detached dwelling, uh, which means you have enough space to park one in the driveway and one in a garage if it's a single car garage or two car garage, which would be difficult to fit on this site, but um, we're comfortable that the, the, the lot is large enough to accommodate a semi-detached dwelling and uh, to meet the bylaw and all the other requirements. Aside, you know, aside from the semi, uh, the, the lot frontage in the area. Okay, good to hear. And I'm glad that others are hearing that. Uh, that's it for me, Mr. Chair. Thank you uh, to-, okay, to Anybody Chad. else? Tom, Tony? Actually, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm looking at the drawing. I think I'm kind of answering my own questions as we're going along. I guess one of my questions would have been, and this would have probably been actually addressed even later at the at the rezoning, would have been the location of those driveways in relation to the corner of the road. Now, looking at the driveway of the one uh, semi-detached on the northern portion, the driveway does actually enter the curve of the road. So it would be more or less something in line with what's happening on the northern, uh, northern semi-detached. Um, I do have a comment with regard with that storm sewer. If there is going to be a semi-detached, I would anticipate another easement going from the northern lot to the southern lot in the back to carry that storm sewer across from the northern semi-detached lot to the southern semi-detached lot, that which would then head to the east to Shawnee. Uh, no. So I would anticipate another easement having to be done there in the future. Well, they would need that if they decided that they wanted to sever this severed lot. Correct. But right now it's one lot, so Correct. pipe can go anywhere. Okay, anything else? Anybody want to make a motion? Uh, Tom? Uh, just a quick one on the drainage. Is there, does there need to be a condition of uh, uh, redistricting of the sanitary or the storm sewer for the severance? This is well, in a watershed, this, this home. So it's part of a drainage system somehow. Well, it already is. Yeah, but normally it would state that it, there's a reapportionment of the land area. Well, we're not, 
we're not doing uh, drainage act stuff on this lot in the in the built up towns. Uh, no, we, would only, we would only do that if this was in the Tecumseh Hamlet or Old Castle or whatever. This is on a on a municipal sewer. Yes, it, it is, but it does belong to a drainage district. It, the town, I guess, would make that a condition. I, I, well, there'll be there'll be a hookup charge, and there'll be there'll be yeah. a surcharge on the water bill, like everybody else. Yeah. So it, that's the way. It's not like it's not like it's a hundred acre farm that needs to be, and it's going to be split in half, and some of it's going to go to that drain, and some of it's going to go to that drain, right? Right. It's the whole the whole drainage area will will deal with that. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. Nope. Seeing nobody else. Did you start to say something, Tony? Not yet. Okay. Quicker to I'm shake my head no than to unmute. I, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm looking for a motion, or will we go and have supper, Tom? I, I'll make a motion. Um, that the application uh, B-08-20 or slash 21 um, be approved. Um, I just think it meets the four tests and uh, uh, I have no concern. And subject to the conditions outlined subject, in the report? Yes. Okay. Supported by? Going once, Tony. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I guess you guys will be in contact with administration about process from from this point on. But you'll have three hundred and sixty-five days to to meet the conditions and uh, finalize the severance. Okay. Okay. Very Thank good. You. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're good. Donna. Application for minor variance A2721, Karen and Michael Kishon, 12333 Riverside Drive. The purpose of the application is to request relief from the following subsections of zoning bylaw 1746. Subsection 7.1.5, which establishes a maximum lot coverage of 30%. Subsection 7.1.9, which establishes a minimum front yard depth of 7.6 meters, 24.9 feet. And subsection 7.1.10a, which establishes a minimum interior side yard width of 1.2 meters, 3.9 feet. The applicant is proposing to construct a 32.9 square meter, 108 square foot sunroom onto the front of the dwelling having an easterly side yard width of 0.9 meters, 2.9 feet, a front yard depth of 2.4 meters, 7.9 feet, and a total lot coverage of 33% as depicted on the attached sketch. The existing deck currently located along the front of the dwelling will be demolished. The property is designated residential in the Town of Tecumseh official plan and zoned residential R2 in the Tecumseh zoning bylaw. No comments from engineering, no comments from building, no comments from fire services, no comments from Essex Power Line, and Essex Region Conservation provided the following. With a review of background information and aerial photograph, the applicant must obtain a Section 28 permit and or clearance from Essex Region Conservation Authority. The Town of Tecumseh must ensure that there is safe ingress and egress from the subject site. And the property owners at 12322 Riverside Drive, 12329 Riverside Drive, 12334 Riverside Drive and 12341 Riverside Drive have no concerns with respect to the application. Okay. Um, did the comment about ingress and egress uh, mention 
what in particular they're concerned about? Or was it just that comment? Mr. Chair, if I may? Yeah, please. Yeah, it, it, um, it's this, the safe access um, policy in the, in the PPS. The, the um, confusing thing with respect to that comment, however, is that it, it's only applicable when uh, there's more than 50% of the building being added onto and that the, the proposed addition doesn't come close to that. So um, I, I believe that um, safe access is not going to be an issue. Okay. I was just wondering why all of a sudden there was that comment when I look at the properties along there. I mean, it, you're taking, it, it's difficult enough to get out of a driveway just by virtue of the traffic. So I didn't know what they were getting at. Um, Mr. Sharon Chair. or Michael? One of you going to speak yes. to this? Is there anything that we need to know that we haven't heard already? <clears throat> I don't I don't think so, sir. Um, we are uh, just trying to go by the book, make sure that we're doing everything right. That's good. You're asking permission rather than forgiveness. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's good. Uh, it's a nice drawing, nice. Uh, rendition on the drawing about what you're putting up there. Anybody on the committee have questions? Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, a uh, question for administration. Um, as we all know, uh, residents on Riverside Drive are dealing with a possible um, active, active trail uh, being put in on the south side of the road. And I just wanted to know if that was gonna be of any concern being, being that they addition is so close to the property line. Through, through you, Mr. Chair, no, um, we've looked at the design and uh, it it's actually improves the, the condition between this property and, and that potential future active transportation route because um, the, the addition is actually farther away from where that transport, that uh, multi-purpose pathway is proposed than the current deck. And Mr. Chair, if, if I may, I misunderstood your, your earlier question regarding safe access. Safe access is not with respect to um, you know, going to and from the site by, by, a, by a vehicle. It's with respect to accessing the site in the event of a flood. A late, uh, oh, major okay. 100, yeah. Lake, the Lake St. Clair flood. Okay. Um, any other questions from the committee? Pretty straightforward. In that case, Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to make the motion to approve the application A27-21 uh, for Karen and Michael Keyshawn at 12333 Riverside Drive East um, in respect that the addition does meet um, the four te tests and um, does not uh, interfere with uh, no 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 issues from the neighbors about the addition. Okay, were the were there conditions? I'm, I've lost lost it. Were there conditions? Uh, um, I didn't specify any. No, I'm just wondering if administration did. Recommended. I got too much paper. <laughs> Chad, were there conditions to apply, to apply to this or not? No, no, Mr. Chair, uh, there, okay. there are no recommended conditions. Thank you. Tom, do you second it? Yes. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Great. Have fun with the porch. Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Mary Avenue. Fun. Application for minor variance A2821, Kimberly Cushing, 317 Barry Avenue. The purpose of the application is to request relief from subsection 6.1.5 of zoning bylaw 1746, which establishes a maximum total lot coverage of 30%. The applicant is proposing to construct a 238.7 square meter 2,569 square foot, one story 
residential dwelling resulting in total lot coverage of 39% in accordance with the attached sketch. The subject property is designated residential in the Tecumseh official plan and zoned residential R1 in the Tecumseh zoning bylaw. No comments from engineering, no comments from building, no comments from fire services, and IRCA provided the following. With a review of background information and aerial photograph, IRCA has no objection to this application for minor variance. However, the applicant must obtain a Section 28 permit and or clearance from Essex Region Conservation Authority. Okay. Um, we have Sean Cushing and Mark Brown as a neighbor, I guess. Correct. Uh, Sean, uh, is there anything you'd like to add that the committee doesn't know about at this point? Uh, you know what, I'm looking to build, or my wife and I are looking to build a one floor home. That's the reason why we're looking for a little bit more, a little extra square footage than, than what's allowed is we'd like to have everything on one floor. We don't want to go up and raise ranch. It's going to be a one floor ranch style dwelling, similar to the one was, uh, that was built to the south. So. Okay. Um, committee have questions. And then I'm going to go, and then I'm going to, if none, I'll go to Mark right now. Okay. Laurie. Yes, I, I will have questions. I, I was curious, uh, Mr. Braun's role in this before we pass yeah, the mic. That's, that's why I was toying with the idea of letting him go ahead before you, you guys spoke. So let's do that. Mark, do you I, hear us? I am the neighbor to the rear. Uh, okay. okay, thank you. Well, not directly, kitty corner. I think a map is coming. <laughs> with the pool. Three, two, six. Right there, okay. Yep. So <clears throat> I have a couple of concerns in regards to this application. Um, first, well, I don't wanna say first and foremost, I think they're probably both equal. Um, the consistency of the neighborhood would be one concern. Um, this neighborhood as you, as being town of Tecumseh residents, you all well know that this neighborhood is basically populated with fairly large lots and structures that all fit within the 30% building envelope with perhaps the exception of 321 Barry, which I do know uh, from Ms. Ferris that uh, is 34.9%, I believe. Um, Mr. Cushing is asking to go to 39.9. Um, so so I, would, I would say, that is not keeping consistent with the neighborhood. This, again, as I said, this neighborhood is filled with homes with large lots and homes that fit within the building, that 30% building envelope. This is not going to be that. That is a fairly narrow lot. And in order to construct a home that large, you will need to push that house fairly far back on the lot as indicated by the sketch. Um, now, in regards to his comment, as far as it being a raise, uh, Raise Ranch or Two Story. Erka being involved in this process, we all know that that house will need to be built four to six feet above grade um, in order to satisfy Erka, just like the house next door. And in doing so, uh, it doesn't really matter to me where you put the stairs on the house, whether you put them in front of the house or in the house, it's still a raised ranch. Now, I understand it's not a raised ranch but it's going to be the same height as a raised ranch. To be frank with you, this is not raised ranch heaven. This is not this neighborhood. It simply is not gonna fit as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the other issue I have is with drainage. Now, uh, apparently Erica has addressed that. Um, I come from the Riverside area and I have seen what happens when you build an oversized house on a small lot and interrupt the flow of water heading to the river. I've seen this happen on numerous occasions and it's, <laughs> it's not a good thing. So uh, that's an issue as well, certainly. So are you talking about overland flow? Correct. Lot? Correct. Well, you're, you, you have no right to run your water across the neighbor's lot. It's supposed to go out to municipal drain either at the front or 
or okay, well, a dream kind of. Okay, that 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 is correct. But when this neighborhood was built, we had you know different plans in place, and it, the the land here all slopes back to the scent, like into the backs of our yards, and then that that land slopes towards the lake. So the overland water runs kind of through the back of our yards and ends up in the lake. That's how it works. Okay. Um, also on the drainage note, um, you are now in, because since you brought it up in regards to the storm, um, you are increasing the roof size of this property <clears throat> by 33%. That water is now going to be dumped into your storm system, which is already struggling in this neighborhood, as we all know. And uh, I don't think that's a very good idea either. And if you dump it on the land, it's just going to end up next on the properties next to them. So, well, you'll have to deal with that. Well, so let's let's see what administration has to say about storm drainage. In terms of height, you did mention that the the property next door to it is would be at the same height is already at that height correct yes okay. and and he is five five feet out of the ground yeah so this this house would be similar to that correct and that would be the only house in this neighborhood that fits that well it'll be the second house well it will be the second now and had i been just to be clear with you we moved to this neighborhood so that we didn't have to be in raised ranch heaven you know this is why we waited so long to get to this neighborhood and now we're going to have one, two behind us. I'm not happy about that at all. all right. And and like I said, this neighborhood is very sought after for these reasons. And I believe you would be changing the feel of the neighborhood. All right. Committee, I have a question for either gentleman or admin. Uh, Lori? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I'm, I'm glad that we got to hear from uh, Mr. Braun, before we opened it up. So there's some questions, I guess, now to compare to kind of not to compare, but also to compare. So this application is now um, sounds very similar, looks very similar, uh, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, kind of. Uh, five percent bigger. Excuse me. Please don't interrupt. I apologize. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to the property to the south. So I do recall the, the, the conversation, the difficulty, the um, really being kind of caught in this um, rock in a hard place as a committee when we reviewed that application for the property to the south. Ultimately, we had posed that question, would you be willing to look at a variance that wasn't so uh, onerous or had such an impact on the, uh, the surrounding property, a lot coverage that wasn't so, um, yeah. so much of an impact. I guess the question to the, to the applicant is, you lived through that application a year ago or whenever it was, or two years ago, uh, would you, or did you look at, I guess, the, the, the lesson learned in that and, and why we're here today? That's for Sean. Yep, go ahead. You got to unmute. Oh, okay. um, in regards to the previous application, we originally asked for 40. And again, we didn't have any plans when we started that plan, that uh, the house that's built there then. I was involved in the construction. I didn't actually build it. I, I was just involved in it and whatnot. And we went from 40 to 35, and we got approved at 35. And just to clarify, Mark, it's, it's 38.7. I know on the paperwork, it was... Um, it said 39.9 is 30 it's 3.3.7 more than what was next door so i mean we just want to have truly one floor living and the raised ranch question mark it, believe me i wish it would be as low as possible but that's an urca issue there's no nothing anyone here can do or say about about how high you can build i don't want it that high believe me i'd like it to be two steps off the ground but that's again helping the I'm um, Mr. Chair, I'm not getting a response to my question about yeah. looking at the lot coverage and a lesson learned in the application from the year prior. Were you able to look at a, a, a opportunity or a plan for 
30% lot coverage, which is the maximum allowable in this neighborhood. Well, it's, it's not satisfying what we want to do. We want to live there. We want to have certain things in the house. And that's why I'm looking at a certain square footage to be able to accommodate those things. You know, I mean, I say, I mean, I can do a 30% mark. You want a 30% raised ranch, you know, and build a 30% raised ranch and with a bonus room. And I don't want that. Do whatever you want. Please, 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 please address yourself to the committee, to yeah. the chair or the person who's asking oh, okay. the question. I'm sorry. You, you no know, press that, talk, please. You know, I, I want to build a one floor living as, as low as possible. Obviously, I don't want to walk up five, six steps, but you have to. I mean, it's just obviously for the water. Thing. So that's what I, I'd like to, I mean, I pushed it a little bit more because it's, thing, it's our personal house and there's some things we want in it. And that's why we came up with the 38. Believe me, it was higher than that. Trust me, I trying to tone it down as much as possible. And again, there was a typo on there because it was 38.7 and not 39.9 or whatever that number was that was quoted earlier. And okay. So okay, thank you, Sean. Uh, the the other question then uh, relates to uh, the size of the property. So, knowing full well that it's a it's a small lot, there are certain limitations that you would have. So it's not uh, this typical size in that neighborhood. Driving around, walking around, biking around, you see that those properties are are very large, and the the dwellings are I think what's the word um, to scale. Sorry, I meant to say the the homes, the dwellings are to scale. Uh, meaning that they uh, work with the size of the lot. So on one hand, I do see that, you know, you, your intent is to have a one floor, one story dwelling, I understand that, but the property is quite small. The, the hardship is that the property is small, but you're also looking for a 2,700 square foot home on a smaller lot in that, in that area. So that's, again, that kind of rock and a hard place that we feel that or at least I do as a member of this committee that I feel that I'm put in once again. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Chair. I wanted to make those comments and ask those questions to Ms. the applicant. No problem. Uh, hey, anybody friend. else? Thought I saw Tom, did you have your hand up earlier? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I think Lori has touched on the, the fact that there was a previous application that was, uh, that talked about the same issues that were that we're talking about right now. We're next um, door, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and you know, um, the applicant is saying that this is his forever home. Uh, so I, I understand, you know, wanting to make it, uh, you know, as, as big as possible. Is there any, um, is there, are there any concessions that the applicant would make to, to make this um, applicant more application more compatible with the area because it is rather large for the lot that you're you're putting it on um, and I think the concerns of the neighborhood are, are valid so I, I don't know uh, Sean if you have a you know considered how it could be modified to you know to get what you want we, we have tweaked the plan several times over i mean in regards to the you know the size of the lot those are two separate lots that were separate lots way back when there was a, an existing two-story home on that property at one time and talk about the there was major flooding issues back in those days and that was a concern that we dealt with obviously once we built the one having a rear yard drain in the property is actually helped the property. I mean, we just had to cut it there the other day and it's not soaking wet like it used to be. It used to be a, a pond back there. And I was one of the, the people to the north of us. That was their biggest concern. And actually building the house has helped that because it's actually directing that water away from the backyard and just sitting there. And again, the 2,700 square feet, it sounds like a ginormous house. That's total, that includes the garage, it includes all the overhangs. It's actually around 17-ish. I actually was trying to get an exact number of, of uh, interior square footage from the uh, the architect and I, he's he, there, he, he couldn't get it to me. But, you know, I know 2,700 square foot, that sounds sounds crazy big, but it includes a garage, includes, you know, two foot overhangs around the entire house and whatnot. You know, I mean, we're, we're 
we don't we're not doing a, a covered rear porch because it doesn't work in our plan i'd love to have a covered rear porch but you know we're making a sacrifice there i mean everyone who's building a newer ranch these days that's that's what they're doing and we kind of cut that out and you know different things here and there as much as we could again we're just looking to build a nice home and in regards to you know i know a lot of people built on double lots way back in the day but there are 50 footers down the street there's a couple on the other side down the way and whatnot and these were two separate lots way back in the day. And I mean, yeah, you know, people built on two lots, you know, but they were separate building lots, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. I would like to comment. Hang on a sec. Um, I had to get you back on the screen so I could see you. Go ahead. So in regards to his suggestion that there are other 50 foot lots on the street, <clears throat> I'm sure there are, but I think if you check, they'll all be within the 30% building envelope. Uh, just because somebody severed a lot and chose to build another house on it doesn't really suggest that he has the right to build a much larger house on his lot. It only suggests that somebody else did it. Uh, but again, I think if you check, you'll see that they're well below the 30%. I'd also like to comment in regards to my own property. Now, my, the footprint of my property is actually going to, is larger than Sean's, okay? And uh, my, my house, my structure only covers about 22% of my lot. So once again, it comes back to the size of the lot in relationship to the house. There are many neighborhoods in Windsor and Essex that have provisions for large houses on small lots. You know, many. This is really not one of them. Okay. And, and I should also say that uh, in regards to the building envelope itself, I think the real question here is where do we draw the line, right? Because we granted it for the house next door and now we want to go a little more. And what's the next guy going to want a little more? Isn't the line already been drawn? Isn't the line 30%? Well, the committee, he is, he's entitled to make an application to the committee. Correct. If the lot has uh, limitations that weren't that weren't considered back when those lines were drawn, then he has an opportunity to ask for a variance to deal with that. In any case, um, so Sean, you've absolutely written out um, a two-story house, period, right? I mean, you could put that right on the... on. I don't know if you can, or you can make that a, uh, a covenant or a restriction. It will not be a two-story, period. No, I, that wasn't my question. <laughs> oh, they said written off. You've decided that you don't want a two-story house. Correct, correct. Okay. All right, anybody yeah. else have a question? I just have a comment about this lot wasn't severed. These were two separate lots. Yeah. We back uh -huh. back. I'm only responding to your comments. Excuse me. Um, it, it's an existing lot from way back when. And way back when, they didn't build 2,700 square foot houses. They built, they used to, I know, I know people that had their kids sleep in the dresser drawers because they didn't have enough room in the house. So uh, when this was severed, that was the style of building back then. So, um, if you want to build a house like they built back then, you would have no problem staying under 30%, I think. So I'm, I'm not sure that argument really holds water. Anyway, anybody else have a comment or a question? Thomas. Uh, just one comment on the, on the drainage. Were the drainage improvements to the last application made on because of the application? Or were they, was, this, was there a town initiative or some IRC initiative for improving drainage in that area? And maybe Chad, you can answer that question. Sure, certainly. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, to my understanding, there was no, there were no drainage improvements made to the area, but there are drainage improvements planned. They're just not for, uh, you know, the, another 10 to 15 years. Um, the, the storm sewer uh, along Barrie, uh, this needs, needs some improvements. And uh, the town noted that because at the last time, um, back in 2018, when Mr. Cushion was before the committee, 
uh, those issues were raised. And at that time, the town was in the middle of a study um, for this area of the town. Um, that study ultimately identified improvements for the area, um, but they are, like I said, they're not scheduled for uh, around 10 to 15 years from now. Um, I did talk to the town's engineer with respect to this strange plan that we heard about, and he, he wasn't aware uh, of the plan that Mr. Braun is, is referring to. So I guess just to be clear, the improvements to drainage, I guess, as Mr. Cushing points out, were, were benefiting his property. He wasn't taking drainage from all other properties and making the condition better. Right. I, I, I can't, uh, can't answer that question precisely, um, Mr. Chair, but you know, he would have had to put drainage improvements to ensure that stormwater doesn't drain from his property onto the budding properties. And that would have been done in accordance with the uh, direction of the building department. Okay, thank you. Um, Chad, just to, when you calculate block coverage on this uh, plan that we have, does the uncovered deck count as Coverage or not? No, Mr. Chair, it doesn't. Does not. Okay. All right. Um, you want to mull it over? Do you want to have a motion here? Or what What are we doing? Come on, committee. It really is. I think we're like Laurie put it. We're between the rock and a hard place because uh, the next one will be fifty percent. Um, go Mr. ahead, Chair, I, I just... Laurie. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep, it's uh, it's a tough one, and these are these circumstances where we have an existing lot of record, a registered lot that is in an established neighborhood that could be uh, a prime property for infill residential development using existing services a walkable neighborhood to schools and pharmacies and everything great and wonderful about our town. The issue, however, is the proposal, in my opinion, is not in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw or the intent of the official plan. For those reasons, I don't think that this application meets the four tests of a minor variance and therefore I move to deny the application. Okay, moved by Laurie, supported by. Tony, any further discussion? All in favor? Up, oh, yeah. Opposed? Gary. Sorry, your application denied, Sean. Um, all right, all right, fair enough. Um, re to, re rethink the layout or rethink the two story or try and find a lot that's bigger. I just go with the flow and build whatever I, I have to build, I guess, eh? Yeah, okay. All right. All right, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you, Mark, for your input. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, may I say something? Um, well, we're finished with that application. I, what do you think, committee? What do you want to do? No, we're done. Okay. Write us a letter. No problem. All right. Uh, are there, there's no deferrals. Is there any unfinished business? No. Seeing none, is there any new business? Sometimes administration surprises me with new business. Let's go to the conference. Um, yeah. How, how many are going to the conference? Daniel? Uh, by, uh, by Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, I was say go to the conference. Yeah. Going to the conference. Um, I'm, I'm, I just want to make one comment, Lori. Thank you for, for denying that application. Um, it, it, you know, the 9% the over 30% was just not even minor anymore, right? And, and I had a hard time even speaking to that application, although I agreed with you opposing it. 
um, because I do do business with Sean Cushing and it, it could affect my relationship with him. I didn't have a pecuniary interest uh, issue there, but I definitely had a personal issue there with, uh, with speaking against his proposal, but thank you. Okay. With respect to the conference, um, did anybody else receive a package today? I got one yesterday. I got one. Okay, very good. I, ju I just got a thing reminding me to vote. Yes, that's right. Although I'd rather have the socks as in past versus the briefcase. <laughs> I thought the briefcase and the headphones was kind of a nice idea. I like the headphones. Good my idea. wife, my wife took that briefcase before I even got my hands on it. <laughs> you got a briefcase, but you got nowhere to carry it. That's right. Mom, <laughs> if it's if it's cute, pass it over. <laughs> walk up and down the walk up and down the path with it, Lori. <laughs> yeah. Just remind the committee we're I'll just remind the committee we're still live streaming and recording this meeting. Yes. Chad, uh, Chad, just out of curiosity, I thought I heard something and I, and I kind of wondered about that. Did you say covered decks would not be included in lot coverage? Right. That's what he said. Or it's, it's an uncovered deck. Okay, an uncovered deck. But as long as it's less than two feet above grade? Correct. That's what this is. Okay. It, yeah, it's not, not included in the lot coverage of this. But if it was if it was more than two feet it, above grade, it is considered. If, if it was up. a covered yeah covered deck or yeah above that, it would be it would be considered in the lot coverage. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, one, one more thing. Um, under new business, uh, some time ago, Mr. Carpenter asked about the um, validity of asking about hardship and need when addressing the proponents of minor variances. And I've, I've done a, quite a bit of research on this and I, you know, I, I could present it to the committee in the form of a, a written report or we could have a discussion about it. Um, and, and I am prepared to talk about it right now if the committee wishes. Or I could wait till the next next uh, next month's meeting and add it on as. Uh, I see one head nodding. Yeah. Would love to hear. How many minutes yeah, I think, do you need? Pardon me. How many minutes yeah, do you need? Do you need no, a I, I think this. I think it can be short. Um, okay. Do you need a motion? A, I, I I don't believe so. This is under new business, and it's just 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 so the committee's aware. There was a, a decision uh, years ago by the name of this. Discabaris in versus Toronto. And at that, uh, as part of that decision, um, they were asking for, you know, relief that was rather extreme, but the, the committee thought that it didn't have any impact um, on abutting properties. So on that sole basis, uh, the uh, minor variance was granted, but the neighbors, uh, requested a leave so that it would, it's called the leave to appeal and that leave to appeal was granted and it went to the divisional court and the divisional court um, mm -hmm. made a number of comments that sort of turned the, uh, the minor variance in the four test world upside down. Um, and it, it generally included, concluded that heart, although hardship and need are, are not to be considered a fifth and, and or a sixth test of the minor variance, um, Anything that the committee deems reasonable can be brought to bear on on the decision. The so it's it's kind of confusing the you know, the jurisprudence and the decisions surrounding that case um, because it seems to be that you're speaking out of both sides of its mouth. It's saying on one hand that it's not to be the test. There's the four tests and only the four tests, but that you can, you know, ask those types of questions if you think that it would have um, any, it would, would benefit the committee making its decision. So uh, it, it also said that uh, the divisional court also noted that it, a variance can be too large or uh, too important to, to grant if it's beyond what 
you know, it, it, the bylaw establishes. So, for example, to use the case of, uh, you know, a lot coverage where 40% is being asked and 30% is permitted, um, the committee might make the decision that uh, it's, it's too important to maintain, you know, the 30% standard or something more reasonable uh, because it would have an impact on, on the surrounding neighborhood if a 40% uh, variance was given, it's granted. Um, and although each application is to be assessed on its own merits in, in the context of, of the, the circumstances in the given neighborhood and on, no, on a given lot, um, it still should be aware, the committee should still be aware of, of the, um, the, the precedent that might be set by that. Although it's not a pre precedent setting um, type of decision. So yeah, they, they're not fifth and sixth tests, um, Chris, but they, they are something that the committee, if it thinks uh, would help in its decision, can, can ask the, the applicant about. So we're allowed to consider it, but not required to consider it. That's, that's right. Kind exactly. of. It's on a mandatory it, test that has to be considered, but we yeah. can if we want to. And it also confirmed a couple of other things that, you know, in your orientation that we, you know, when you joined the committee, we talked about, it's not a mathematical decision. Um, you know, it's still supposed to be looked at um, in the context of those four tests. Um, but it, it also emphasized that all four tests have to be considered. So it's not just about whether it, it has no adverse impact and it's minor. You have to also really carefully think about is the intent of the bylaw being met and the intent of the official plan being met? And is it appropriate for that particular neighborhood? Um, and all four tests have to be considered independently of one another. Um, and then finally, the other uh, the point that it brought to bear was that in giving a decision, the, the committee should give the reason for the decision so that reason can be challenged. You know, at the, at the board, so, which are all things that, um, that you know, this committee is doing, but uh, it's always good just to be reminded of that. And it was a good exercise for me to go through and, and uh, you know, research the whole issue of need and hardship, because I know that question gets asked a lot of, um, of applicants through this committee. But uh, any, any questions about that? I know it was a- I like that perspective, than, yeah. I, I like the perspective, Chad. Like the, I think the question that when we pose that question is, what is the hardship? Sometimes what, you know, I foresee, uh, sorry, I see as a hardship is there's an easement running through your property and you can't develop on it. Or there is an existing massive, gorgeous, humongous tree that's protected or a species at risk. Those types of hardships are, I think for me, a stronger argument to say that is a hardship. You are maybe not able to work within the limits of the zoning bylaw for a side yard or whatever it is, or lot coverage. So that when I look at hardship, but if the hardship is I want my patio to be bigger so I can fit, you know, like a giant yep. Yep. table. That was that was part of my reason for asking is because I almost never see genuine hardship. Like these are always situations of, you know, Laura, you asked the question, what well, you know, why can't you fit within 30%? Well, because I want a bigger house, or because and generally, and, and I'm not being overly dismissive, but people say I have a growing family and such. It's like, yeah, but everyone has growing families. Like, I mean, that's not that's growing families aren't a hardship i mean that that was that's called life like that's your plan that's not that's not a restriction of the site that's not like you said trees or easements or, or things like that i mean it, it's if you can't add to your house and get a minor variance every time you have a child just because you're having more you know what i'm saying like it's not that in and of itself is but i see none of ours have genuine what i view as genuine hardships it's simply that and that was one of my comments to chad and actually what the one neighbor commented on was that Aren't people just gonna keep going bigger and bigger and bigger? Like, right. if I was a property owner building a new house, I would always apply for a variance. Why not build a bigger house if I can? And I was speaking to somebody who works in another town, and they said their committee is a rubber stamp, <laughs> and, that, and that everyone just applies for variances all the time because they always get approved. And it's like that to me is not what the committee's here for. And that's where I was curious as to where, what is the what is what are we required and what do we as a committee really want? And, and Daniel kind of, you know, he, he was against the Cushing's application, but it's kind of a, 
it's harder when we can't stake firm ground, I guess is my point. And when it does violate one of the tests, it makes it for us to say no. And I think that's what, it feels wrong. It feels like it doesn't fit the community. It feels like it's not what big wide open laws and to come see you're supposed to feel like, but we can't say no sometimes because it, it technically passed the test. And I guess that's where if hardship was something we could stand behind, it might give us one more leg to stand on when we when we just, just don't feel right with an application, if that is making sense. Yeah, and, uh, Mr. Chair, no, if I may just one, one more quick point. Um, you know, where the committee does get to consider other issues and bring those to bear in its decision um, is, or why it, it's able to do that is because of the language in, in the act under 45.1, it says may, may grant. It doesn't say, you know, shall grant if it, if it meets these tests. It says may grant. So there's that discretionary um, consideration that the committee has. And that's how, um, you know, the divisional court in this case found its way to suggesting that hardship and, and uh, need or something that can be, you know, at least asked about. We, we did have one application. I can't remember how long ago it was. It was an oversized uh, floor plan. And somebody on the committee asked, what, what is, well, exactly that, what is your hardship? Why, why can't you downsize it? And the answer was, because I'm building an accessible house, my wife's in a wheelchair. So, I mean, th there is place for that, I think. But just, just because I want to build it and I only want to build one story or, or things like that, I don't think that's, that's where you run into problems with that argument. Yeah. And, the other, and the other thing that I always have trouble with myself is the, the term minor. Is it minor in nature? It's not a mathematical thing. Well, okay, what is it then? <laughs> if it's not a mathematical thing, maybe we can go to 60. I don't anyway, so and, and there, some is folks reason, are... there is a reason for the committee too um, to vary things based on the geography of the, of the land you're looking at or, or whatever big trees or things like that. I think those are legitimate considerations maybe that that court was thinking about. Anyway, thank you, Chad, uh, for throwing that in. For, uh, I know I saw uh, in your report reference to that very case that you were just speaking to. So thank you for throwing that in there for, for us to- I thought, I thought it'd be a good time to elaborate on that. And I know that uh, Chris yeah. had asked for it and I did reference it a bit in, in, in the report. So. Yeah, I know it is. Uh, one other thing, Mr. Chair, I think uh, as residents, um, you know, if we didn't live, breathe, and eat the, you know, planning act like some of us do here as committee members, we wouldn't know. Uh, I think that, um, you know, neighbors, friends, uh, family members will ask us questions about, hey, you know, why can't I go higher? I mean, why is there, or why can't I go closer to the road or closer to this? Folks sometimes don't know. And you know, to ask the planning division or planning uh, department or building department, uh, you know, why not? I think that's up to us as well to educate, um, you know, in some circumstances it's, um, we can put that check mark and say, good to go. And some circumstances it's, it's just not uh, feasible for, for the neighborhood. So it's worth a shot in some cases, some uh, folks really just want to give it a shot and some folks um, really do. I, I found our, our uh, administration to be very able in terms of advising property owners about, you know, let's be reasonable about this. What, what do you, th you know, that sort of thing. So I, I give them a lot of credit because they had a lot of this stuff off before we ever see it. Anyway. So, Mr. Chair, it's a fine line. We, you know, you, yes. don't, you don't want, you don't want to cross, yeah. right? Because they yeah. have, they absolutely have the right to, to apply, as you mentioned uh, yes. tonight. You, and, um, but you know, we we try to you know Donna tries to take them through the uh, considerations that the committee will will be making. Um, and you're right, most of them, most of the bad ones don't get to the committee. But um, there's a lot of gray, so in the I, applications, <laughs> right? Just uh, skipping back a little bit to old business. I think I some point I had asked about if the uh, special area for egress and so on that the 
fire department was looking at mm -hmm. was ever going to be plotted on the town's mapping system. And so that, for instance, this one tonight, Riverside Drive, probably should be plotted on there if that's where that comment came from. So that we yeah. so that we can check that in advance if we see a comment like that. Well, is it in that area or not? Um, Mr. Chair, the the interactive mapping that administration has ac access to uh, does have the the areas, um, and the, we have so we are working on refining mapping to make those decisions easier and more accessible. Okay. So um, yeah, just so stay tuned. It, there's going to be more work done in that in that area. That's good. That, Actually, I was kind of quite surprised, that. Sean or Chad, that that comment wasn't included on that on the Barry one. It wasn't included because in that area, they, the roadways are, are above the threshold. Yeah, so the, the floodwaters don't get above that threshold. That's why we need to map. Yeah. Nowhere, nowhere we're talking about. Okay, we're good. Well, then I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Thomas and Daniel, all in favor. Good evening. Good night, everyone. Have a good, have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks,